So you've decided to attend your first opera at the Metropolitan Opera House in New York City. Congratulations, you are getting to step into the highest level of singing that we know in one of the greatest theaters in the world. You're in for a real treat. But there's so many things to consider, like should I get box seats or should I sit in the orchestra or family circle or how much money am I going to spend or what should I wear? Or, I don't even know which opera to choose. No worries. In this video, I'm going to break down everything you need to know about attending your first opera at the Metropolitan Opera House in New York City. So, you've decided to go to the opera, but you don't know which one to choose. That's okay. The MetOpera.org has a wonderful breakdown of the synopsis. It'll even show you how long the opera is going to be, when the intermissions are, so you have an idea of how much time you can expect to be there. Because just like movies, operas tend to be about two and a half hours long, and movies tend to be about the same. Sometimes operas and movies can go to three hours, so you know you gotta be prepared. And the Met Opera gives you a nice little synopsis of what you're about to commit to time-wise. It also gives you a synopsis of what you are going to be watching, so you get an idea of the story. And and sometimes on the website it gives you a little bit of a blurb about the history. However, what's even more important at the bottom of the Met Opera is that when you're choosing an opera, sometimes you're choosing for a whole bunch of different reasons. Just like sports where you might really love a particular team because you're really in love with and inspired by or emotionally connected to a player, basically like in tennis if you're a Serena or Venus Williams fan, I didn't get into tennis until I was watching these two amazing black women slay the game. So that's what inspired me to decide to watch more tennis but the same could be said for opera that you see an opera singer that you really love and you're like I want to support that girl because I love her voice or I love his voice and you go to the opera to see whatever they are in but that's really when you learn to expand your musical preferences more so when it comes down to the Met Opera they have a list of all the singers that are going to be performing and underneath their names is a little list of the dates that they will be performing so if you're going for a specific singer make sure that you line up with the dates that you want to be there and hear that particular person sing. Now, when you actually arrive at the Met Opera, they offer you program notes so that if you have no idea what you're getting into and you didn't do that little research beforehand, you can actually see what, your st what the whole story is going to be in the program notes before you even sit down and hear the overture. Even when, even if you don't do that, you can sit down in the seats at the Met Opera and there's a translation box embedded into the seat in front of you with a little button where you can push up as many times as you need to to get to the language that you desire. So let's say you're a French speaker or you're a German speaker and you don't speak English, but you wanna enjoy this opera that happens to be in Italian or Russian or French or, or English, then you can just cycle through to your appropriate language so you can sit back and enjoy the opera without any obstruction of understanding. So there are so many ways to get over the language barrier in opera. They make it very accessible for everybody, regardless of your nationality or the language that you speak. So don't be afraid to just jump in in that regard. Now, when it comes down to choosing what's best for you, I feel that these two things are just like movies. Operas and movies are pretty much the same thing. They are stories that are being told about the human experience. And it's best to do a little bit of research beforehand because you wanna make sure if you're bringing younger ones that you choose an opera that is age appropriate for them because opera deals with these big humanistic emotions that can sometimes be really dramatic, which works great for stage, but might not always be age appropriate for your little niece or nephew. If you go and do a little bit of homework beforehand or you subscribe to this channel or you look up things on Wikipedia because you're interested in opera and you want to learn more. Why do we like to dress up for these shows anyway? You want to be looking your best and that's why I find that a lot of performers and artists and people that attend the opera tend to dress up at the beginning for opening nights and closing nights. Now everything in between is up for debate and that's where I say you can come as you are or choose your own adventure all of the countless rehearsals and the endless hours that we spend diving through this music to deliver this great art gets to be honored by our presence and showing up with our best selves because that's what the musicians are doing on stage as a performer like yeah thank you so much for coming out and supporting me because 
this was hard. <laughs> you know, this was no, this wasn't easy. We making it look easy, but it's not easy. And opening night, a lot of people are celebrating that. So you want to come on out and just enjoy dressing up and feeling great about a celebratory moment where all of these moving parts come together in perfect union and harmony, and we make amazing music. Now, closing night, it's about celebrating the fact that you're coming to the end, and it's also your last time to be together with this crew of people who are experiencing this show for a while because music and art is cyclical. Sometimes we have things that run for a certain period of time and then they're done. All right, so you've chosen the opera that you're going to, you've chosen what to wear, but now you have to choose where you want to sit because that also influences what you're gonna wear. When you go to the Met Opera, there's that beautiful, gorgeous staircase that you see as soon as you walk in. And then you've got the gorgeous Swarovski, 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 say that three times fast, crystals that are hanging pendulously in the center and then they're also inside the theater. It's really beautiful to take in the Met Opera's lobby. It's very, very, very uh, posh and fashionable and classic. There's also little museums on different levels, so feel free to explore as you go. But just know that because there are so many levels, it means that there's a lot of ground to cover when you're trying to get to your seat. Remember, the Met Theater sits 3,800 people. So with that 3,800 people, sometimes you gotta really climb if you're gonna go to the family circle. Now, where is the best place to sit? I say in general, the best place to sit is smack dab in the middle, no matter where you are in the theater. You can be in orchestra, in the balcony, or way up in the blood note in the nosebleed seats. As long as you're in the middle, you're gonna get the best sound. Why is that? because sound likes to bounce off of hard surfaces. So as the sound leaves the singer's throat and spins out into the, into the hall, the sound is going to best be delivered to you when there is nothing obstructing sound. Now, if you're sitting off to the sides, things start to get obstructed because the sound is gonna bounce off the things that get in the way. And by the time it gets to you, it's not going to be as unfiltered so that's something to consider when you sit off to the sides and that's the case whether you go up onto the box seats on the side or even if you go on off to the side in the balcony or gallery seats it doesn't always translate to when you go to the family circle because if you go off into the sides it's actually kind of in your favor because the sound likes to bounce off of that corner that's there and it reverberates back into you and you actually kind of get the best sound in the house and it's a really great it's really great wherever you sit but if you're really looking to go for the sound and really feel this experience of hearing the human voice be supported without a microphone, just pure, un, just pure awesome human strength and, and study and practice coming at you, then sit in the middle. <laughs> okay. So you've done all the work, you've decided which opera you would like to see, you've decided what you're gonna wear, you even have an idea of where you're gonna sit and now it's time to buy your tickets. Now at themedopera.org, there's a lot of ways to purchase tickets that vary in price and so I'm gonna go through all of them right now. There are six ways to purchase tickets at the Metropolitan Opera. The first is through Flex subscriptions. You can decide to see up to six or more operas for that season and get 15% off your total subscription price. It's totally up to you. You can totally customize it. And if you really want to see a lot of opera that season, it might be the most affordable way to go. The next way is with group tickets. Group tickets is another option. With group tickets, if you buy 10 or more tickets for a single performance, you can get discounts counted rates. This applies to students or travelers or friends and family and it's a really great way to just get everybody together on one single day to have a wonderful experience all together. The next way is for students. Students get a discounted rate however it's for select performances. You can check it out on the medopera.org. I encourage you to log in and create your own account that way you have access to rush tickets which is the next thing I'll talk about as well as standing room tickets and I'll talk about that in a minute. The next way is rush tickets. Now I personally love rush tickets because it's literally a lottery. If there are any tickets left over from a particular performance where they haven't been sold in these other traditional ways, then the day of the performance you have the option to get a rush ticket. A rush ticket again having that lottery-esque aspect to it means that you can get a really amazing seat for only $25 anywhere in the house. So getting an orchestra seat for 25 bucks is a steal. But here's the thing. When you go to 
do the rush tickets, you have to have an account with the medopera.org. Very easy to sign up, create a username and password, and boom, you're ready to go. It doesn't cost you anything. But once you sign up for that, then on the day of the performance, you have to be logged in and at 12 noon, whatever tickets are left over immediately become accessible. And it's literally like whoever can get it fast enough. So if you refresh and refresh around that time of noon and you see a ticket available, you have, I think, a timed amount, a lot amount of time to make that purchase and get your rush ticket which feels like a real gift when you get a really fantastic seat uh, for a really affordable price the other way to go is with standing room standing room is literally just that you stand the entire opera and now here's a little tip from somebody like me who's done standing room when I was really broke or just when I was like I really want to see this opera and I don't want to spend a lot of money standing room is the same concept as rush tickets with the rush tickets they're available at 12 noon but with standing room tickets they start at 10 a.m that they become available again standing room is only a allotted amount of tickets for that particular opera and if they happen to have leftover standing room tickets then they'll make them available but this one you have to actually also have an account with the metopera.org now because they're only twenty dollars it's really worth it and yes you can stand in standing room and be comfortable be ready to stand for that full opera so wear your comfortable shoes wear comfortable clothes clothes that you don't mind standing in for a long period of time but here's my little pro tip i like to see who didn't show up before the curtain comes up and the lights go down and because I'm making a mental note of who didn't show up or maybe they're still late, by the time intermission comes, I just like to do a quick look to see, oh, that person didn't come. And then when it's time for everybody to come back in, I'll come in and slip and find a nice little seat right before the lights go down and be able to sit and enjoy the rest of the show without having to pay the full price. <laughs> The last option to buy tickets at the Metropolitan Opera was actually new to me and I'm kind of glad I'm seeing this now and <laughs> didn't realize that was, I was missing out on all these amazing opportunities to take advantage of cheaper opera. The Met has this option of Fridays under 40. That means Friday night performances will be given at a discounted price to anybody that can prove that they are 40 years of age and younger. Just know that it's always cheaper to get opera tickets on the weekends. Fridays and Saturdays are the most expensive days to buy opera tickets, which is why if you do Fridays under 40, then you can take advantage of essentially getting a cheaper seat on a really high priced night. All right, last thing I want to talk about is late seating. Now this is just traditional across the board. It doesn't matter if you're going to the Metropolitan Opera or if you're going to local theater or if you're going to a smaller opera company. If you are late, and this is specifically to my black folk who are my brown folk who are running on CP time because Lord knows I do. Right. Let's say you're ready to go, you're on your way to the Met Opera, but unfortunately you are running behind. Now the Met Opera has a, a couple of traditions to let you know that, that the show is going to be starting soon. So it's kind of neat that they begin to ring bells eight minutes before the show starts and four minutes before the show starts. But let's say you are literally dashing in and I, hi, I am a woman of color who runs late, unfortunately. And sometimes being fashionably late just really doesn't work when it comes to going to the opera because you need to be there on time. You're just not going to get in. If you're missing those indication that it's time for you to find your seats and you have eight minutes or four minutes to find your seat and you're not there, the ushers are just not going to let you in. Now, the thing that's specific to the Metropolitan Opera House, on the sides of the theater at orchestra level, there are two theaters. But in my mind, it's like a little tiny, like, movie et it's like a movie theater et it's a little tiny thing and so in there it's at the conductor's discretion it's not always something that's accessible at least not in my experience that i've seen but if it's made available you can watch at least the first 30 minutes or so of the opera until it's until there's an appropriate time for you to enter and you can watch it being streamed on screens that are available in these two side halls that an usher will take you to if you truly are late that is not always an available feature it is really lovely when they do offer that but just know if you're late you're late and that means that you won't be able to enter into the met opera or into the theater until there is an appropriate time to sit down and sometimes that could be as long as 30 minutes to an hour depending on how long that first act is and depending on how much is happening in the theater at that time because remember everybody's there to enjoy the sound so if there's somebody that's coming in late and creating a lot of sound that disrupts 
that is disrupting this sound experience that you're paying a lot of money to be a part of, you'd be kind of pissed off. You'd be like, uh, could you please wait? Or could you just have showed up on time? All right, guys, that's my share for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like today's content, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe below. And this is Opera Appreciation for Black and Brown folks, making opera equitable. See you guys next week. Bye.